Everyone, I hope you've had a fantastic Easter. It's really good to be back with some more maths lessons. I think you're going to really enjoy them. Um, we've got a little sequence of lessons coming up that are all around shape and developing your reasoning around shape. It's going to be really different and exciting uh, and I can't wait to share that with you. First of all, we're just going to do a bit of a recap on some of the skills that we worked on when we were last together um, around how you calculate and the different ways you can play with numbers. Let's get started. Well everyone, we are back and ready to go with a number talk. We're going to have a look at some calculations and how we can play around with the numbers to make them friendlier to calculate with. So let's get started. Um, have a look at these two addition calculations. I wonder which one you think is easier and which one you think is harder. Now my guess is you think 30 plus 15, well that one's easier. 28 plus 17, a little bit harder. Let's have a look at 28 plus 17. On the left I've got 28, on the right I've got 17. Um, now before I did that calculation, if I'm adding up these circles, I think I would just move these two red ones and put them over here. I think that would make it slightly easier. And then I know the answer will be the same overall because I've got the same number of circles. So what I've done is I've taken two from the 17 and I've put it on the 28. So now I've got, instead of having 28 plus 17, I've got 30, two more, plus 15, two less. I know that the answer is going to be the same. So rather than doing 28 plus 17, what I'll just do is I'll think, well, I'll put, I'll take two from the 17 and put it on the 28. That will make 30 plus 15. Much easier. Let's have a think about these subtraction calculations. 34 subtract 19, 34 subtract 20. You'll think 34 subtract 20 is easier, and, and I think it is as well. Let's have a look at 34 subtract 19. There's 34. If you were taking away 19, I wonder where you would take them from. Hmm. Would you take them from, from the 4 here first, or where else could you take them from? Well, what I think I would do is I would take 20 first. Rather than taking 19, I'd take 20. So there we go. There's 20 gone. I've done 34. I've subtracted 20. And now I just need to think, mm, well, in total, I was only supposed to subtract 19. I subtracted 20. I, I subtracted one too many. So there, I'll have to put that one back on. So there I can see my answer is, uh, is 15. Lovely ways of playing with those numbers to make it easier to calculate. Um, so have a look at these three calculations. I wonder if you can use any of those techniques. So how can you change these numbers before you calculate with them to make the calculation slightly easier? Okay, so pause the video and have a go at two or maybe three of those calculations. How can you change those numbers to make them friendlier to calculate with? Pause the video and have a go. So let's have a look at some of the different ways to calculate and to play around with these numbers. My favorite one here is to go for 51 add 30 and what I've done there is I've just taken two from here and I've moved it there to make that up to a 30. I, I guess equally I could do 53 keep the 53 the same then add 30 um, so that would get me to 83 so there I've added um, I've added two too many so I'd need to take the two away so, so that would be 81 of course 51 plus 30 81 as well don't forget to put the answer in um, 64 subtract 48 uh, I think I'd probably do 64 and I'd start by taking away 50 and I'd have to think mm, 48 50 I've taken away two too many let's add those back on 64 take away 50 14 add the two 16 um, I, I could do, use this idea of constant difference, so let's just add the same number to both of these numbers, then the difference will be the same. 67 subtract 51 is 16. Oh, I do like that one. Um, 85 plus 75, well I could do 80 plus 70 plus 10, and I've got that 10 by adding the 5 and the 5. 80 and 70 is 150, add the 10, 160, or oh, my favourite. I could take this 5 and just put it onto here. So the 85 becomes an 80. Uh, the 75 also becomes an 80 by coming 5 more. Double 80, 160. Okay, so it's time to introduce this week's theme, which is all about reasoning around shape. It's going to be a fantastic week. Um, we're going to start off by describing and visualising and drawing shapes. And trust me, today is going to be as much of a challenge for me as it is for you. Oh, I'm looking forward to this one. 
So, what we're going to do is we're going to have a go at describing different shapes. Where one person describes a, a, an image and the other person has to draw it. So you have to visualise what's being described and see how accurately you can, you can draw the shape that's being described. Now, now don't do this one. Th this is just so you understand how the activity will work. But I'm going to describe some pictures to you and normally you'll not be able to see them. You can see this one. But if I was describing this picture to you, uh, and asking you to draw it, I might say something like this. Right, I want you to draw a really big square. Okay, have, have you done that? And you'd hopefully have drawn that square. Of course, you don't need to this time. And then I might say something like this. Okay, I want you to go to the bottom right-hand corner. Now, not right in the corner, just a tiny bit to the left and draw a very small circle. Now, the circle will touch the bottom edge of the square it won't touch the right edge it's almost in the corner but not quite and it, it's about a quarter of the height of the square okay so so you and then you would draw that circle hopefully and then i might say something like this okay now go on the bottom edge of the square almost the left hand corner but not quite it's just a tiny bit from the left hand edge and you're going to draw a diagonal line and that line meets the top of the square and it's not quite halfway along the top of the square. And then so you draw a nice straight line. And then I'd say, okay, right, let's have a look and let's see if your picture is the same as the one that I'm looking at. Now that's what the challenge is going to be like. Um, so let's have a go for real. I'm gonna describe a shape and I want you this time to draw it. Now, I wonder how accurately we can do this together, okay? Um, so what I want you to do this time is I want you to draw quite a long rectangle, a long thin, thin rectangle. So the rectangle won't be that tall, but it'll be very long. It's probably three times longer than it is tall. Okay, so draw that rectangle now as, I, as I'm speaking. There'll be no pause button this time, but, but do draw that rectangle. Do pause the video if, if you need a bit of extra time. Okay, I'm going to keep my description going. Now, I want you to go to the bottom left-hand corner of that rectangle, and you're going to start a diagonal line. And the diagonal line goes from the bottom left-hand corner of the rectangle, and it goes to the right-hand side, halfway up the right-hand side. So I want you to draw that diagonal line from the bottom left corner of the rectangle, the long, thin rectangle you've drawn, to the middle of the right-hand edge. Okay, so draw that line. Okay, and when, when you've drawn that line, there's one other thing that you need to do, which is you're going to go to the top left corner of the rectangle, the first rectangle that you drew. And just above it, you're going to draw a small square. So the square is about half the... Imagine the height of the rectangle you've drawn, the thin part. It's about half that height, so it's a very small square. And it starts on the top left-hand corner and it goes upwards. So just draw that square. Okay, so... Hopefully, now you've drawn a picture. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the actual picture that I was looking at and thinking about. How similar are our drawings? Should we see? There. Have a look at yours. Have a look at that one. Did I do a good job in explaining that? Could I, could I have added anything or said something differently? Okay. I think it's time for one more go. Now, I'm looking at a different shape this time. And what I want you to do is draw a very large square. So a nice, a nice big square, okay? You can use a ruler if you have one, um, but a nice big square. Okay, now when you've drawn that square, and again, if you need to pause the video at any point, then do. But when you've drawn that square, right in the middle, there's a circle. And the circle is, well, it's fairly small, but if we're thinking about the whole square, I would say, imagine it in thirds, and, or imagine you could fit nine circles in the square. It would be like you're drawing the middle circle of that square, just the middle one, okay? So draw that one circle in the middle of your square. Okay, and then when you've drawn that circle, I want you to look at your square and look at the left-hand edge. Now we're gonna draw a triangle that goes from the top corner, and then there's a diagonal line that goes further to the left, so it's kind of outside of the square. And you're going to draw a diagonal line downwards. Now, actually, what I think I should have done is I should have, I should have described this first. Go to the bottom left-hand corner of the square. 
and I want you to draw a line, a straight line that goes to the left, that kind of continues the, the, ed, the, the bottom line of the square out a little bit, if you like. It'll be about half the length of the square. And I want you to draw a line that just goes to the left straight along. It's about, it's about half the length of the square. So it's like an L backwards. Okay. Now, when you've done that, I want you to go to the corner, the far edge of the L, the left-hand side, and draw a diagonal line that goes to the top, the top left-hand corner of the square. So it'll make a, a, another triangle. Okay, so, so what you'll end up with is it's like on the left-hand side, there's a big triangle, and then that joins with the square, and in the middle of the square, there's a circle. Okay, and when you finish, let's have a look. How similar is your picture to this one? How well did you take on those instructions? Ooh, how accurately did I describe that? Oh, it's, it's a difficult skill, this, isn't it? Well, I really do enjoy this challenge. Now, normally, at the end of a video, I show you where to find the independent tasks. Today, I actually can't do that because it would kind of give the game away a little bit. But what I want you to do is this. I want you to find someone else to play this game with. Now, it might be you can do it via WhatsApp, um, or it could be that you could play with uh, you know, a grandparent over the phone, um, or maybe there's someone in the house that you can play with. But we need a player one and a player two. Now, underneath the video, you'll find a link where it says player one and player two. If you click on those links, it will open up some different pictures that you can describe. Remember, the rules of the game are one person describes and can see the picture, another person draws, and then you have to look how similar are those drawings to those pictures. Now, equally, you might not need to use the examples that I've given. You might want to make your own drawing, which is fine. But I hope you get on really well with those, ac the accuracy of those descriptions and then in visualising and drawing those shapes. Good luck and enjoy.